Hello students, the next topic which I am going to discuss is the regenerative cycle. In previous lecture of the Rankine cycle and reheat cycle, I told you uh, if we increase the mean temperature, the mean temperature is generally denoted by the Tm. So, if we increase the mean temperature, the efficiency will automatically increase. And in reheat cycle, uh, the mean temperature is increased by increasing the amount of heat supplied at high temperature. But if we increase the mean temperature, uh, we, we can increase the mean temperature by decreasing the amount of heat added at low temperature. In simple word, the, the efficiency is uh, the ratio of output divided by input. This is the this is the formula of efficiency. So in reheat cycle, we worked on the increasing the output to increase the efficiency of the cycle. If we increase the output, the mean temperature will automatically increase in reheat cycle. But in regenerative cycle, we'll study uh, about decreasing the input if we decrease the input so it will increase the mean temperature so it will automatically improve the efficiency of the cycle so this is the concept of regenerative cycle this is the flow diagram of regenerative cycle with the help of this diagram we can easily understand the concept and working of the regenerative cycle now, if we consider there is 1 kg of steam enters into the turbine. 1 kg of steam is entered into the turbine. So, during the isentropic expansion into this turbine, some amount of steam extracted from the intermediate state of the turbine. If we consider here, uh, we can say here some amount of steam will partially expand into the turbine. So, if we consider here, if we take m amount of steam which is partially expand into this turbine and uh, where the pressure of the steam we considering the pressure of the steam is p2 so this partially expand steam into the turbine will transfer to the heater m amount of steam which is partially expanded into this turbine will transfer to the heater and it will use in heater to heat the feed water now this uh, the, the the here the m amount of steam is transferring into the heater so the rest amount of steam is 1 minus m amount of steam so this 1 minus m amount of the steam will expand fully into the remaining stage of the turbine so after fully expansion uh, this uh, uh, here we will consider the pressure of the steam the fully expanded uh, steam the pressure will be p3 and the steam at pressure p3 will transfer to the condenser after fully expansion so here we can say in this turbine we'll get some turbine work so after uh, when it transfer to the condenser so in condenser the steam will condense and it will convert into the water so after con condensation uh, the condensed water will transfer to the pump so here we'll consider in condenser there is some heat rejection so we'll get some heat or there is some heat rejected by the condenser so, uh, uh, after condensation, it will transfer to the pump and from this pump, it pumps to the heater. After pump, it pumps to the heater where this condensed water will mix with the mkg of steam. mkg amount of steam which is extracted at pressure P2. So, here mkg of steam will heat the condensed water and uh, so here uh, when, when water will uh, uh, add with the m amount of steam so the water will uh, get the heat from this m amount of steam and and this uh, after uh, after mixing with the steam this water will pump back to the uh, boiler again and here in this boiler there is an external source of heat supplied is available 
to heat this water again heat the condensed water uh, again so by this process we can say here the condensed water is mixed with the m amount of steam uh, in this process in the heater the condensed water is mixed with the m amount of steam so the temperature of this uh, water will increase here because of the heat of the steam so here uh, when it goes to the boiler we need less amount of steam or we need uh, we need less amount of heat to heat the water again for converting it into the steam so this is the concept of regenerative cycle to reduce when we reduce the input when we decrease the in input uh, amount of steam we can increase the efficiency of the cycle so with the help of the flow diagram we can draw the ts plot or the ps diagram of the regenerative cycle here this is the ts diagram uh, the vertical side is denoting the temperature and the horizontal side is denoting the s entropy so this is the temperature entropy plot for the regenerative cycle here these line are representing the constant pressure line these line are representing the constant pressure line where the pressure we are considering p1 p2 and p3 so Uh, at point one, the one kg of steam will enters into the turbine, and one to two is representing the partial expansion of the turbine uh, steam into the turbine, and uh, the steam uh, the partially expand steam is M, and here the partially expand steam will transfer to the heater. So this two to six is representing the process of heater. Now from two. Uh, 2 to 3 is representing the fully expansion of the remaining amount of steam 1 minus m so here this steam will fully expand and from 3 to 4 at point 3 it will enter into the condenser and this 1 minus m amount of steam will condensed into the condenser so this process is represented as the process 3 to 3 4 and at point 4 it will transfer to the pump and from this 5 to 6 is representing uh, the process uh, here from 4 to 5 is representing the process uh, pumping process and this uh, at uh, from 5 to 6 is representing this 1 minus m amount of steam at point 6 uh, will uh, transfer to the heater and it will mix with the m amount of steam so the temperature of the uh, con uh, condensed water or the water will increase here and from 6 to 7 uh, this process is also representing the pumping process and from 7 to 1 is representing the heat addition process into the boiler so this is the ts diagram for the regenerative cycle with the help of this T ts diagram we can find out the efficiency of the turbine so the formula of the efficiency is if we are considering eta is the efficiency of the regenerative cycle so the efficiency will be wt minus wp divided by q1 wt is the turbine work wp is the pump work divided by heat added so here wt for this cycle regenerative cycle will be the turbine work will be here so from 1 to 2 it is uh, representing the wt and 1 to 2 and 2 to 3 is representing the turbine work so here the turbine work will be for process 1 to 2 we are considering the 1 kg of steam is entering at point 1 so we'll consider here 1 h1 minus h2 for the partial expansion term plus 2 to 3 the amount of steam is 1 minus m because m amount of steam is transferring to the heater so the at point 2 the uh, the fully expansion uh, the process which is represented by 2 to 3 so here the amount of steam is 1 minus m so it will be 1 minus m h2 minus h3 h2 minus h3 so this is the turbine work now pump work wp so here we have two pump 4 to 5 and 6 to 7 is represented as the pumping process so we have two pump work here wp1 plus 
डब्ल्यू पी टू सो डब्ल्यू पी वन इज रिप्रेजेंटेड बाई द प्रोसेस फोर फाइव सो हियर द अमाउंट ऑफ स्टीम इज वन माइनस एम एंड इट विल बी एच फाइव माइनस एच फोर प्लस सिक्स टू सेवन द अमाउंट ऑफ स्टीम इज एम सो दिस विल बी एच सेवन माइनस एच सिक्स this is the pump work this is the total pump work this is wp1 and this is wp2 now we have wt and wp now we have to find out the heat addition q1 so heat addition is represented by this process 7 to 1 is represented as the heat addition so this will be heat addition will be 1 uh H1 minus H7. H1 minus H7. This is the heat addition. One H1 minus H7. Now we can find out the heat rejected also. Heat. Re this is the heat addition Q1. This is the heat rejection Q2. <coughs> so the Q2 will be one minus M H3 minus H4. now we have all the terms wt wp q1 and q2 so we can find out the formula for the efficiency so it is wt minus wp divided by q1 so this is the wt wt will be h1 minus h2 plus 1 minus m h2 minus h3 minus wp is 1 minus m h5 minus h4 plus m h7 minus h6 divided by q1 is h1 minus h7 so this is the formula of efficiency for regenerative cycle we can simplify this formula and we can find out the, the small formula for this regenerative cycle after simplification of this formula so this is the formula for of the efficiency of regenerative cycle here we can also find out the mean temperature the mean temperature is denoted by tm so we can find out the mean temperature here the mean temperature is denoted by tm and here to find out the mean temperature we'll consider the equation we know the equation tds equal to dh minus vdp this is the equation we are considering and here in this process same as the rankine cycle and the reheat cycle we are considering the heat addition process as the constant pressure process these all process we are considering as the constant pressure process so here the pressure is constant in all stages so here if we consider dp equal to zero the change in pressure is zero because we are considering pressure in all stages is considered so this will be considered as isobaric process constant pressure process is considered as isobaric process so this equation will be tds equal to dh so here we are considering tm1 this t as the temperature mean temperature for the regeneration so here we consider tm1 is representing the uh, mean temperature of the regeneration so this will be change in entropy will be s1 minus s7 equal to h1 minus h7 so this mean temperature with regeneration with regeneration will be the ratio of h1 minus h7 divided by s1 minus s7 this is 
it's for regeneration process this is the mean temperature for regeneration process now here if we consider for rankine cycle for rankine cycle the mean temperature will be if we are considering the mean temperature for the rankine cycle as tm2 so this will be this is without reason generation so this will be h1 minus h5 divided by h1 my, uh, sorry s1 minus s5 so this is the mean temperature without regeneration or the mean temperature for the rankine cycle so with this we can say tm1 is greater than tm2 tm1 is the mean temperature with regeneration and tm2 is the mean temperature without regeneration so on the basis of the ts diagram we can find out these formula or on this these formula we can say the mean temperature with regeneration is always greater than mean temperature without regeneration so we can say here mean temperature for with regeneration is higher than the mean temperature without regeneration so uh, as per the concept uh, we can say the efficiency for this condition is always greater than the efficiency for this condition so this is all about the regenerative cycle thanks for watching the video and subscribe the channel for more lectures